I want to go straight to Paula Reed, who has some new reporting on former President Donald Trump, who just suffered a big blow in court. Paula, what happened? Well, Dana, just moments ago, a federal judge ruled that former President Trump will be subject to additional restrictions ahead of his federal trial here in Washington, D.C., related to his alleged role in efforts to subvert the 2020 election and January 6th. Now, like many defendants, he already has some restrictions on what he can and cannot say as a criminal defendant. He is already barred from harassing or threatening witnesses and his limitations on the extent to which he can discuss the case with anyone uh, who is not one of his attorneys. But in recent weeks, special counsel prosecutors argued that there should be more restrictions on him in light of public statements that he has made uh, about witnesses, uh, about staff members. and. Here, the judge had a really difficult task, Dana. I was in court as she listened to arguments from his defense attorneys and from prosecutors about this need to balance his First Amendment right, the fact that he is a candidate for office, but also the fact that this court needs to be able to conduct this trial without interference. They need to select a jury that is not afraid that it is going to be threatened or intimidated. They also need uh, people to be able to do their job as witnesses. And it was really interesting to watch this back and forth. The hearing lasted for over two hours. Then Judge Tanya Chutkin, she's the judge who will oversee this through what is expected to be a trial. She left the bench for a short time and came back. And she ruled that she was going to add additional restrictions on Trump. He is now barred from targeting uh, members of the special counsel staff, uh, members of the court staff, and also any witnesses. Now, the government had asked her to go a little bit further, asked her to restrict any comments he made, uh, would make about Washington, D.C., or the jury pool, and also some of his comments about the Justice Department and the Biden administration. Judge didn't go quite that far. But she has expanded the restrictions and she said, look, if you if he violates this, there will be sanctions, but it's unclear exactly what will happen. Now, we're still waiting for the formal order to lay out all of these details, but she just ruled from the bench. And I would describe this as as a partial win uh, for prosecutors who wanted to see these additional restrictions. And Dana, look, Judge Chutkin, she has made clear that she understands that former President Trump has a First Amendment right, but that must yield to the orderly administration of justice in this courthouse. Paula, thank you so much for reporting that breaking news. I appreciate it. Jeff Zeleny is still here. I now want to bring in Evan Perez to the conversation for your reporting as well. Uh, before you guys weigh in, I just want to give our viewers a sense of some of the comments that the former president has made that precipitated this partial gag order just yesterday on his social media platform. Uh, crooked and deranged prosecutor Jack Smith, who has a terrible record of failure, is asking a highly partisan Obama-appointed judge, Tanya Chutkin, who should recuse herself based on the horrible things she has said to silence me. He went on to say these political hacks and thugs are destroying our country. Let's see what happens Monday, meaning what just happened. Uh, will America survive or not? That's just one example of the kind of things that the judge is saying you have a First Amendment right, right. but it's not uh, unlimited. Right. I mean, and look, the, 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 the thing that the Trump lawyer, uh, John Lauro, kept going back to in this hearing was that uh, because the former president is running for office, that it would be inappropriate for any kind of, any kind of curbs to be, to be put on the former president because he should be able to criticize, for instance, Mike Pence, who he's running against for the Republican nomination. He should be able to uh, criticize Bill Barr, who is, is likely to be one of the witnesses who's going to be testifying in his trial. So the judge really did struggle with this, but the, but the bottom line is that she believes that she needs to give him some kind of rail. And she also pointed out that uh, if he violates the, the restrictions, and she's going to have to elaborate this in an order that we're going to see written down for the former president that he can look at. Um, but she points out that she's not going to wait for anyone to ask for any sanctions. She is going to sanction the former president or anyone else who violates the order. So we'll see how that looks like, but it's going to be a struggle. Okay, so that was going to be my next question. How is this enforceable? When no. you say sanction the former president, what does that look like? Well, I mean, it, it usually starts with a scolding with a judge, um, but in the end, I mean, she can decide that she, you can go to jail. I mean, he's released right now. Uh, on his own recognizance, right? He is on release right now and is subject to this court. So 
we don't see that happening. I mean, it'd be such an extraordinary thing. John Laura raised this. She's like, what are you going to do? You're going to put him in jail during mm -hmm. the time that he's running for office? And she's like, you know, she's saying, look, there are limits here to his First Amendment rights, given the fact that, uh, that this is, that there is an interest for there to be a fair trial and for this trial to go off when she says it's, it's happening, which is March. By the way, she pointed out, mm -hmm. I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to push this trial beyond uh, the election. We're not, that's not where we're not going to do that. I mean, look, we'll see if he abides by this. That's always been the sort of the, the case with the former president. Right before this ruling was issued this morning, I got a handful of, uh, of fundraising appeals from the Trump campaign saying they are trying to silence me. So, look, he's never been able to uh, we're never really taken seriously or something. So, but this will be the first uh, test. He's trying his case or defending his case a couple different places in the court of public opinion and on the campaign trail where he thinks this benefits uh, him. There's no doubt this is a very serious matter. You're right. She could hold him in contempt. Right. Uh, we'll see if that happens. But um, I know we've never seen anything. There's so like many this. things we've never I seen. I know. Like, I, it's like we need another <laughs> word for un seen? We need another word for unprecedented. When right. you figure it out, let me know. Yeah. Uh, but since we don't have one at the moment, at least not at the tip of my tongue, we know that this kind of thing has never happened. But judges, in general, have issued gag orders. Yeah. When it's somebody other than the former president and candidate for president, generally speaking, how successful are gag orders, even limited gag orders? Well, I think once you do get scolded by a judge, I mean, I think it does kind of bring, if she brings him in and tells him personally, you know, it does have an effect. I mean, most of us don't want to go send, spend time in jail, right? Um, I will say, there is a corollary in this very courthouse. Um, Roger Stone was put on trial a couple years ago. Um, it was a similar thing where he was lashing out at the judge on social media, even, you know, retweeting a picture of her with some crosshairs in the tweet. Um, and she came down pretty hard on him and limited his social media activities. But in the end, you know, he has the right as a defendant to speak. And judges are also concerned that they will create uh, things that will be appealed if he gets convicted, things that will be, you know, room for a defendant to toss out their conviction. So I think judges are very, very careful in how they restrict the defendant in this time. And he's in Iowa this afternoon, the former president. He'll be campaigning in about an hour or so. So perhaps we'll see. Or he can send out a message on social media at at um, any point. But again, I mean, he is con he's more concerned about the actual merits of these cases in many of them than he lets on. He kind of blows them off, uh, politically speaking, in these fundraising appeals and things. But he is concerned about going to jail and other things. So uh, we'll see if he um, <laughs> flouts it or not. Uh, trying to think of the word here with the meaning <laughs> of that. But uh, we'll see if he if he ignores it or not. Thank you so much for all of that. And this is, of course, happening uh, on the backdrop of very, very real uh, dire world events. Uh, and we can talk about his comments about those world events at another time.